The title of the message tonight is uh, Clothed with, the, with God's Glory. Clothed with God's Glory. You, you know, uh, again, I'm going to share things from my heart, and I just believe for you to be able to receive them. Uh, God wants us to experience Him. To experience his presence. To experience he must the person. Like the scripture just prayed. Uh, this is eternal life. That you may know you. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. God wants us to experience him. In fact the Amplified Bible. It talks about experiential knowledge. Uh, in a. In a experiential love of God in Ephesians chapter 1 let me see if I can look it we can look it, look it up uh, in Ephesians chapter 1 he says uh, of course you know that you pray that the eyes of your understanding may be lightened and then he comes to let's see over here Come on, thank you, Lord, help me. Oh, yeah, it's chapter 3, sorry. He says, uh, yeah, he says, verse 19, he says, that you may really come to know, that's the Amplified uh, Classic, Verse 19, 3, 19. Uh, hold on, let's go back then, verse, verse, eight, verse 18. Come on. We may read from verse 16. <laughs> oh, verse 15. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen to this, what he says. Uh, For whom every family in heaven and on earth, talking about God, is named... That father from whom all fatherhood takes his title and derives his name. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Wow. The Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. And then he says this in verse 17. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your heart. And then he says this. May you be rooted deep in love and founded secure on love. And then verse 18 says that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints. So, so look at this, a continuation of it. It says that Christ may dwell through our faith, may settle down, abide, make his permanent home in our hearts. And then it says, may you be rooted deep in love, but founded securely on love. This is what enables us to go to verse 18, being rooted deep in love and founded securely on love, to have the power and to be strong to apprehend and the grass with all the sins, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. The experience of that love. That's not uh, mental. That is not a, a kind of like, yeah, that love of God. It's experiential love of God. You experience, listen, one who has experienced the love of God a true experience of the love of God knows not how to hate. Serious, you didn't know how to hate. You don't have time for that. You don't accept that, that, that kind of a thing in your life because you don't have time for, to hate. You understand? Know, because you've experienced that love of God. And then he says this, uh, uh, of that love, what is the breadth and length and height and depth of it, 
that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves. I'll never, I'll never, never, ever forget this. That is August 1996. Having given my life to Christ and then supernaturally, uh, the Spirit of God manifested the fruit of the Spirit, which I didn't know at that time it was the fruit of the Spirit. But he, he manifested that inside of me. And, oh my goodness. I remember an aunt. And how long, I don't know if I'll call her. She's still, anyway. I remember a woman who was living with my uncle. <laughs> so I don't know if she was my aunt or not. Anyway, she died some years ago. But, but she was living with my uncle. And, and, and their relationship was as fake as it could have been. Yeah, it, was, it was really fake. Really fake. Full of lies. Really fake. <laughs> if my uncle ever listens to this message, that's upon him, he'll feel the blood. But, but actually, I went for the funeral. It was in Langata. My uncle didn't come. He's, he's at the coast and all that. And I called him after that. Did you know that woman had uh, five other children? No. <laughs> Can you imagine all that? Grown-up children. She was a grandmother. <laughs> and do you really knew, did you know her name? <laughs> I won't go further than that. But I'm telling you the truth. Oh, that's exactly, you remember where I came from. Uh, do you really know her name? We knew her by another name, and that was not her name when I went to the funeral. <laughs> I went to Lanata, and there were a few people, and I had this time, the children are being brought, grown up children, and, and they, are, they are children. And I, I, I stood right there, I thought, wow. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, for, for so many reasons, uh, I, I didn't like her. Uh, so then, and there was a, just, I didn't like her the way, you know, I was, I was in sin myself. Then I gave my life to Christ during that time. And then I, the Lord manifested that fruit of the Spirit. And I remember looking at her and telling her, I love you. Wow. And there was no thought, there was no like I'm having to force myself to do that. I just knew that I loved her. That really amazed me, that surprised me. And of course she looked at me and I remember she just shut the door. <laughs> I just shut the door. But I told her, I love you. I was two months old in salvation. In fact, the, the daughter later on, some few years ago, told me that she thought uh, they knew in the whole compound that I lost my mind. I'd been smoking marijuana, so I finally lost my mind. She, she, she said that, we knew you had lost your mind. But experiential, uh, practically through experience for ourselves, the love of Christ just far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. People, we can read the scriptures, but if we don't have the, 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 the revelation knowledge of the scriptures to impact us so deep that we don't doubt that God's love, God's love for us and God's love towards others, we'll say just, I love you from the head. And it will be conditional love instead of unconditional love. We have Look at this. I do believe every one of you are here this evening is because you know there is more. Or else what would you be doing here? It's because you know there is more and you know that you have, you have what you have but there is more of God for you to experience. Experiential uh, knowledge. Experiential knowledge. It's this love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being and all the fullness of God may have the richest measure 
of the divine presence and become our body holy filled and flooded with God himself. If we are to experience his presence, we must endeavor to walk in love. The rich presence of God is provoked by our love walk. The rich presence of God, because God himself is love, is provoked by that. He says the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body holy filled with father with God himself. But that, that's why we have really to, to believe God for revelation knowledge concerning the love of God. To walk in love is to be clothed. You are clothed. You are clothed. Remember, remember the Bible talks about uh, uh, being clothed with humility. You remember that? It talks about being clothed with humility in, in 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 in verse... Uh, he says, uh, okay, uh, in verse 5, Like you as you younger people, submit yourself to your elders... Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. And then he says this, and be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. And then there's a, another one also, being clothed with humility. Let me, let me show you, he doesn't use the word clothed, but Remember, we're talking about uh, uh, we're talking about cloth with, with his glory, and then uh, let me see if I can have also another one. Okay, I think that's fine. Uh, oh yeah, there's another one over here. Go there to to first to Colossians chapter three. Uh, verse 12. Are you seeing there? Uh, he says this. Uh, Therefore, as the elect of God, a holy and beloved, put on. Put on. You ever told your child, put on that shirt? <laughs> he says, put on water. Okay. <laughs> put on Tender masses. Put on tender masses. Put on tender masses. Is anyone who has a version say clothed? Or oh, the amplifier say that. Oh, okay. Let, let's see. Okay, Colossians 3 12 say, So as God's own chosen people who are wholly set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well beloved by God himself, clothe yourself therefore. Clothe yourself therefore. As God's own chosen ones. And then he says this. His own picked representatives. Who are purified and holy. And well beloved. So he says he's put, put on. Here he says what? Cloth. 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 And have cloth. Look at verse 10. He says. And have clothed yourselves. With new spiritual self which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image of love himself, the likeness of him who created me. Hallelujah. So you're seeing what I was saying about being clothed. Okay? Now, that being the case then, uh, let me make some statements here then. Lingering in his presence is so crucial for that to happen. I really do encourage you this year. 
I really do encourage you that you purpose to link in his presence. You can read the scriptures, but you have to endeavor to experience those scriptures. To experience the scriptures. And what brings the scriptures alive into yours and my life is God's presence. And for us to be fully impacted by his presence, we must linger in his presence. By starting that way, but then throughout the day by being conscious of that, of his presence. And that will affect even your speech, yours and my speech tremendously. You see what I'm saying? So then, so, so you have to make, make up your mind that you're going to linger in his presence. You, you can enter in and, and into his presence and, and, and few minutes and, and you can, and sometimes uh, you can feel even in, in, you know, in, in your, even in your physical body and then say, wow, that was good. That was an introduction to deeper things. That was just an introduction to deeper things that he needed you to stay there. Look at this. The feelings are wonderful. But when you can experience him until we can hear his voice, we can experience his love and assurance concerning the future that he has in store for us. We can allow him to, to bring to life his word in our hearts. That is not words that we read, but it's words that we experience in our lives. Something has started changing and taking place in your life. And you desire to be clothed more by his, but with his presence, with his glory. For the, the, there are things that we will only receive if we practice his presence. People pray. People pray. And if you ask any, 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 any person, I've, I've had even very wicked people, you know, obviously, and you say that, yeah, that's my prayer. People pray. But knowing him is different. It makes a whole difference in our lives when we get now to know him. To know him. People pray. And people pray without his presence. <laughs> and many times don't even enter. They are not even sensitive to his presence. Was it oh, the other week when traveled to my home and then I was talking to my you know in on, on 24th night I said people we are reading a Christmas story from the book of Matthew and then we did and then I said uh, and then uh, tomorrow we are reading from the book of Luke chapter 1 and 2 so I know we did so I think it was uh, the second 25th Christmas day so I said uh, let's, let's sing and just thank the Lord and praise him. And we started singing. I led some, some songs and we sang. And then my nephew, this one is 17, I think the other one is 14, or I think 14, or 13, 14, I'm not sure. Then, then uh, I, I asked her, uh, I said, I, sense, I feel his presence here. And then my sister said, yes. And then I asked uh, my nephew, do you feel his presence? I said, no. <laughs> I say, never mind. Just stay right there. Come over. Come over here. And then I lay hands on him. And I just, the first one, I just said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then he went. <laughs> and, then, and then I asked him, what's happening? So all the others are observing, you know, what, what is going to happen. They're, they're, they're just spectating. And I said, what happened? He said, I'm almost falling. <laughs> Are you feeling good? <laughs> so, and then I called the older. I said, come over here too. He's 17. I think 17 now. And uh, he's usually so quiet. Then I laid hands on him and just thanked the Lord. 
And then he, he, he just, I don't kind of like position of what is happening here. And then I asked him, so Sammy, how are you feeling? He started laughing. And he's laughing loud. Can you imagine Sammy laughing? And he's laughing loud. And he said, what is it? He turns and he starts laughing. He's such a quiet person. <laughs> and what he say? I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's the manifest presence of God. But God has much more. He said, if we, if we just feel like we felt good, we came to church, we danced, we shouted, and that's it. No, it's not. We ought to experience his presence that we go out every day. Every day his presence. Every day changing as our surroundings, changing things that are placed in places and changing the work of our hands. I'm talking about him being with us and manifesting his presence. It's not just when we sing. It's not just when we pray. It's good we pray. It's part of it. We sing. It's, but it's just us walking as the new covenant act of covenant. Act of the new covenant. Carrying his presence. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read it first the new, from the New King James Version. Look at this, you there? For we know. Listen, I want you, I want you to see in this manner. The word of God does not have time. The eternal was. All right? So don't be limited, which sometimes you do so much, to a certain time. It's now. All right? Now. <laughs> now. Now think about it. What does the Bible say? We've been raised together with Christ. When? We already have been raised together with Christ. But you say, but you still have this body. Yes. That's in the time, in the realm of time, of the unfolding of our redemption. But we've been already raised with Christ. And the Bible says, we've been already been raised with Christ. We've been made to sit at the right hand of God. So, if we follow the scriptures, we should always follow. We are in his presence. We are in his presence. We are right seated at the right hand of the Father. With our, Lord, with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, see, see this then, having said all this. Verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. I fear no death. We have a building from God. A house not made, not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Wow. Huh? You see, someone can point a gun at you and say, I don't fear that thing. Instead of what? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Spare me. Spare. Please. Don't kill me. Please. Take everything. <laughs> hey, how oh, if. If you really know his presence, seriously, if you really know his presence, say, I don't fear that thing. Make my day. And you cannot take this life. Your master, the devil, can destroy this body. But you cannot destroy me because I belong to him. That's what I say. Would you give it to me? What kills people? Fear. Because you are not sure of him. Oh, you want to die, Pastor? Now I still have a purpose here on this earth. But I don't fear death. I refuse to fear death. Many of you kept quiet. 
May you be delivered from death. Fear of death. <laughs> Special African traditions and its customs. <laughs> Listen to this then. For in this we groan. In this what? In this body. We groan. Honestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho, ho. You need to desire to be clothed more. To be clothed more. Just think about this. To be clothed, I, I told you don't think in terms of time. I want you to think of now. In, in now. He says this, For this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. Can I tell you of what will happen? That, that takes me to a scripture like Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. It says we set our minds on heavenly things. Do you know what will happen? We'll be clothed with the heavenly presence until we are more aware of him than we are aware of his mortality. Enoch became so aware of it until he was gone. Come on now. Enoch became so aware of, of God and his presence until one day they woke up. And I don't know if they talk about his wife, but I, I, I can you imagine the wife finally Where did you finally go? But I do believe we talked and talked about it. Huh? He must have spoken up and spoken about it. About how he was, he was ready one day to be taken away. And you will never find a tombstone of Eno. Oh, God is no respect of person. He says, for with this we groan honestly. Our groaning right inside of us. <laughs> I, I do believe if our prayers, we start desiring just to, to oh, let, let me say this, uh, as I said about lingering in his presence will develop inside of us of his heart, of his purposes, of his ab ability, the way he sees things, his compassion, until all what we desire is what he desires. And that changes everything. That changes everything, church. We desire exactly what he desires. He's become all what who he is is what we so desire. That the material things cease to have their grip completely on us, on our thinking. Or in our thinking. Do you know what that means? We'll attract much more of them. Because they no longer have any meaning except to serve God with anything that will ever give to us. So he says this if indeed, verse 3, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. So it seems like one can be a believer and walk naked in the spirit realm. Hmm? Oh, I'll show you some things. Let me read further. For we who are in this tent, talking about the flesh, grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but Father clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. You've heard people say this, and we've said it. It's like every one of us. You know, that is my weakness. Do you know why? Because mortality is still so mortal. But God wants us, this immortality, to be so much filled with the immortality until look at this. 
like Paul would say, when I'm weak, I'm strong. Because everything that manifests is no longer my flesh, but it's, it's his presence around me. His presence. I am clothed with him. I am clothed with him. When hatred comes, I try, I, I can only embrace with love and forgiveness. You'll never hear of a believer saying like, you know what they did to me. You know what, how can anyone do such and such to me? You know, he doesn't even care how I feel. You are alive in the flesh. You're so alive. You need to die. You need to be clothed with his presence. That you can freely give, forgive. And no, no hatred but to love. Is that saying something to you? Yes. And look at this. That I like that. that. That mortality may be swallowed up by life. Oh. That mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So the Holy Spirit is a guarantee of the manifestation, full manifestation of this. So if we are conscious of him, he will do exactly that. If we are conscious of him, he will do exactly that, that we be earthly, tabernacles, full of his glory. Full of God's splendor. Full of the majesty of heaven. That his presence is the ultimate that we desire than anything else. Let's see if we can read from the Amplified Version. The Amplified, not classic, the Amplified. <clears throat> from verse 1. That is Second Corinthians chapter 5. He says this, For we know that if the earthly tent our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed in this house, it's talking about this flesh. We groan, longing to be clothed with the immortal, eternal, celestial dwelling. So that by putting it on, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, often weighed, often weighed down, oppressed, not that we want to be unclothed, separated by death from the body. Now look at this, what you just said right there. Not that we want to be clothed. Huh? What is that? What is it? So that putting it on will not be found naked. Go next, next one. It says, while we are in this tent, we groan, be burdened, often weighed down, oppressed. Not that we want to be unclothed. Okay? separated by death from the body that that is so that means now we're no longer living on this earth we've been separated not that we want to be so in other words he's talking about our existence right here on this earth you see that not that we want to be we want to be unclothed separated by death from the body but to be clothed right now you see that that's what i wanted you to remove the 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 the, the thoughts of time are you seeing that? Let me say, look at it. For while we are in this tent, this one here, we groan, being barren, often weighed down, oppressed, not that we want to be unclothed, separated by death from the body. No. We want to be right here in this body, but in this natural body to be clothed so that what is the mortal, this body, will be swallowed up by life after the resurrection and the resurrection life is just in operation on this earth. Just like Jesus had been raised up from the dead and he walked on earth and he ate fish. 
Wow. And he entered through walls. Oh, I feel his presence just reading these scriptures right there. You, you see that? What does that mean? I mean, we, we start walking about and by the wisdom of God and in the operation of the wisdom of God. We don't become old like our age mates. Oh, yeah. And we don't become old and frail like an age mate because, listen, life is working in us. That's Romans chapter 8. In fact, don't, don't, don't depart from that, this scripture. Let me read Romans chapter 8. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, in, in verse, verse 10, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead. The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit, which is our born again spirit, is life because of righteousness. And then he says, verse 11, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, or in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body. That is our lives. Our mortal body is being swallowed up by the immortality. The resurrection life of Christ through his spirit who dwells in us, who is our guarantee. So all what we need to be is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that his life can flow through us. And the presence and the glory of God is what? Surrounds us. Surrounds us. And we are clothed with the heavenly presence just like Adam and, see, and, and Eve before they ever sin. Before they ever sin. Remember they say that, that they are naked. They are naked. But it's not the nakedness as you think of. But they wouldn't know because they are covered with his glory. You leave your body right now, the body falls down, but, but you, won't, you don't go out naked. You are covered with God's glory because you know the Lord, you are born again. You'll be taken home in that new gown, which are the garments of righteousness. And listen, they don't come then. You already be made. So let what is inside, no one they say we be clothed with love in the, the tender masses, that which is inside. Can, can I tell you what that actually is? That's the character of God being formed around us. So singing is wonderful. It provokes that. We see so many scriptures regarding that. Praying is wonderful. It provokes that. But I'm telling you, the, the walking in love which is actually the full man manifestation of the character of God in our lives, will manifest so much of his presence to heal the wounded world. That's walking in an open heaven. That Peter, they had to bring the sick close that is just his shadow may heal them. But you know it wasn't his shadow. You know it was the, the heavenly presence that he carried. He's, he carried that presence, that resurrection power until, until he just healed the sick, just being around. Can you tell me who you are? You are so different. Why do you say that? Oh, my goodness, I've seen so many people, but you are different. What is this you're carrying that I may know? I may experience the same. It's when we carry that presence around us. His character being formed in us. Did you see that scripture? So it's not like we want to be, we want to be unclothed, separated by death from body, but to be clothed so that what is mortal, the body, will be swallowed up by life after the resurrection. And I do believe 
That's why there is that growing, groaning in Romans chapter 8. It's just going up, 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 up. We groan, we groan, we groan. It's like we want, this is not our home. We are here for an assignment, but it's temporal. We want just to be clothed with his presence more and more. Hallelujah. Now then, I want us to take some time to pray. When we experience divine, nothing else is important. Nothing, people. Nothing. I'll never forget, and I meditate on it. I pray just meditating on it and getting into the very day or the, the, the day that I experienced that is as a boy who's just been born again, five days later, I cry and cry out to God. I say, there's more to what I'm experiencing because I, I feel I am fearing the way I used to fear. I am I'm not seeing any difference. And yet I thought I'd sacrifice a lot since Monday. I haven't smoked a cigarette. Don't you know that's a sacrifice? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing this for you. I've not smoked. I've not drunk. From Monday I could have been drinking almost every day. This is a sacrifice. And yet I'm fearing the same way. Did I forsake all those things to come and be tormented? I cried. And finally, I say, you say, oh, my God, this Christian religious education helps. Eh? You say, if I knock, you open. When are you going to open for me? I remember crying out, and I'm telling you, it was in my head. It's like I was done. If this is not, in fact, I say, if this is not going to work, would you just kill me? Really? Ah, what's the very reason? What's the purpose of living to be in this kind of a state, uh, you know, the state that I am in. I cried until my dad left the bedroom and came to check out what's happening. My, my mom, I was told, my mom said, actually told my dad, your son is dying. You can tell he's dying. And true, that son was dying right there. Because <laughs> another life had to come in. And, and, and you need to go check. If he starts talking about knocking and opening, he's dying. My mom was not born again. And then, uh, and then he came and gave me a break. But I remember that night. Then the Lord spoke to me. Then everything else, everything, everything, everything. Nothing left that I thought was important to me, left me that evening, that night. Because that night just left me. And I knew, I knew, I knew there was no thing important than God. And I want you. And I want you. And I want you for the rest of my life. That was my attitude. And that has been my attitude. Because I, I knew. I knew. And I keep knowing that. And you start crying now for the mortality to be swallowed up by that immortality. And so many times you magnify weaknesses instead of magnifying his presence. Magnifying our weaknesses is because we are naked. We need to be clothed. It is this woman you gave to me. She gave me a food. Blame game. Why I'm not experiencing this is because of that. But it's a sinful nature. It's a, a consciousness of sin instead of consciousness of his presence that will bring us to that place like God. I'm not experiencing as I should. And I'm setting my eyes on you. 
because there's nothing important than you, Lord. And I linger there in his presence. Do you know what lingering means to him? I believe it means to him in this man. Everything out there is not as important as being with you. Like what I said last Sunday about focus. Everything out there is not as important as, as, as being with you. Ah, Lord, you know, I, I've said sometimes, I've said this, Lord, you know I should have been sleeping. <laughs> but you're more important to me than this sleep. <laughs> I've said that so many times, and probably sometimes you feel like that's a big sacrifice. But I believe he, he knows me in this flesh. He's touched by your infirmity. The Lord Jesus Christ, he knows that. I could have, he could have been sleeping, and, and Jesus knew what was to sleep, to feel so tired until you sleep in the boat. <laughs> yeah, we have a high priest who cannot but be touched by your infirmities, for, for you are tested as we are yet without sin. He knows what to be so tired until just feel, sleeps in the, in, the, in the boat. So I think when I, I say, Lord, you know I should have been asleep by now, but I just want to be, your, to be in your presence. He says, I know that. I'm touched by that. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a man sitting right at my hand, my right hand, and he's telling me the same thing. He's giving me the story. <laughs> I've never been in a body, but he's giving me the story. And he's touched by your infirmities. And we are so one until when he's touched, I'm touched. So I know how you're feeling, son. But thank you for me being so important than even your sleep. Do you know what that fasting is? That's exactly that you're so important than my, my food. I believe I'm speaking words that will penetrate into your spirit and provoke some things inside of you. Amen. So then, will I go into this scripture? Oh, okay. Oh, no. What's the time? I think we'll pray. I have some few scriptures here. Let's go to Genesis 3 and then I had some scriptures in Haggai and Ezra, but probably may do that next week. I remember some years ago I, I taught about the true fasting of a new covenant church is to spend time in his presence. In, in what did I say? Genesis chapter 3. It says, uh, uh, of course, you know the serpent, how cunning he was. And the woman had conversation with the wrong person. So the woman saw that the tree, verse 6, was good for food and pleasant to, to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of his fruit and ate. That is uh, according to First John chapter 2.15. That was the last of the flesh, which was, the tree was good for food. Was she starving? Was she starving? She wasn't. Uh, that was pleasant to the eyes. That's the last of the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise, that to be independent of God. Calling forth for his own independent, or her own independent, is like the pride of independence. She took of his fruit and ate. I like the way Pastor Wade would say that. And the husband was an arm rich away. And you? Is it nice? Oh, eat, Adam. Okay. Really? <laughs> Would you, would you have thought of this? Yeah? Just think about this. It. It's not, but it's good to think. It's not seeming if you think, right? What about say, if you ate that food and say, threw it away and looked at that sack <laughs> with authority because it had been given by God. And they say, God, Father, 
forgive me for this. He's not eating. And as for forgiveness, he's standing there as, as uh, between the wife and the father. Wouldn't you have thought something would have happened? Huh? I, I do believe so. Anyway, that didn't happen. Thank God we're here. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Look at verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So the glory had departed. They just knew they were naked. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. That which they once enjoyed became something that they have to run away from. You know, when I get, uh, that's a pastor, pastoring is so wonderful. Because you deal with people. <laughs> But when I, I've, I've seen that over the years when a believer is there in church and all that. But then at some point you start missing them in church, habitually. You call them. They always have excuses. And you just know that they, they are biting a certain fruit. <laughs> Seriously. They have been eating a certain fruit. And it's not the fruit of the spirit. Oh, Pastor, you know, this, this, and this, this, and this, this, and this, this. I like it. I've, I've seen this over the years, and it always blesses me. I've had even a certain young person uh, last week reaching out to me. I knew how much, you know, she and I knew how much I missed her life, but she's calling and to, to want to talk to me. Pastor, please. I want you to help me and pray for me. You can tell the heart is there. You, you understand that? That for me is always blesses me. I think I've sat down with such people and then they, they look at me, especially young people look at me and say, Pastor, you didn't condemn me. I don't feel like I'm judged. I said, that's not the whole purpose. It's not the whole purpose. And to see some, someone restored, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Then running away and running away and running away from that. And you hear that. I hear those excuses. When I'm realizing, you know, calls are not answered. Or then you called and then the person didn't answer. So your pastor called the member, didn't answer. And then maybe 11 hours later, they sent a text. They didn't call. They sent a text. But the way I've been so busy, pastor. And they don't tell you when can... When can I talk to you? They keep quiet. I know the food, this food that they've been eating. <laughs> Seriously. And it's not the fruit of, of the spirit. There's another fruit. But how do you how do you do? You love people. You love people. That blesses me because no one owes me anything. I don't owe them anything except to love them. So anyway, in finishing this, and then they heard the sound, and then the Bible says in verse 9, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said to him, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten the tree from the tree which I commanded you that you, you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman you gave you, uh, whom you gave me, the woman whom you gave to be with me, you are the one who gave me this woman to be with me. Before then, I was okay. But you chose to give me a woman. <laughs> and that's exactly what he's saying, people. Don't you know that he's saying, you are the problem first. <laughs> Come on, analyze this scripture, look at it. Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Yes, I have eaten from that tree. 
How do you answer? Is that the answer? I've eaten from the tree. Yes. Instead of that, then the man said, the woman whom you you are the one who came up with the idea of a woman and then you insisted for me to have the woman to be with me while I was all alone I had no problem I never eaten this fruit she gave to me uh, in fit was this this time we said she had almost forced me to eat of the tree and I, and I think the force came later <laughs> <laughs> the beam first came later because Adam kept increasing in vocabulary of death. But then the, but then the man said, of course, you see, and the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? The woman said, someone else. That's, that's usually is an indication of not being in his presence. When we have excuses for our failure. Instead of who he is, who he is to us. What he's done for us. That you can be clothed with his righteousness instead of the fig leaves. Anyway, it's a bit of humor there. <laughs> the woman. <laughs> and I had a certain preacher say many years ago, when Adam said that, God said, okay, from this day forward, it is he who finds a wife. Not given, you find a wife. <laughs> That's what the prophet said. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Now, instead of me giving you, you find a wife. Because you started accusing me, I'll, I'll have you find. And men have been looking. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I really, really desire so much to be close to this presence. Grow in the revelation of the love of God, experiential knowledge of the love of God. Let his presence mean more than anything to you. And I encourage you in this. Don't just make prayers. Stay in his presence and let him give you prayers. Don't just make prayers. Stay long enough until you can tell this is the right thing to say. But look unto him and let him fill you with his presence and his desires and his heart's concerning situation until now you are able to see what he wants you to see. Rise upon your feet, please. I think the most significant things that I've ever seen in my life, I was thinking today, I was thinking I think two, three days ago and it came up in my mind also today. I thought, okay, this year actually be, is a quarter century since I, I gave my life to Christ. <laughs> quarter century. 25 years. And, and the, the, the things that, significant things that I've ever seen the Lord do in my life, uh, I didn't ask for, for them. He told me. When I was in his presence, he told me, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I remember the, the first time, uh, I mean, among other, other things, but I remember on 22nd of August, 1997, he told me, I've called into full-time ministry and, and all and all. And a few days later, he said, uh, uh, stop looking for a job. That's not what I've called you to do. Stay in my house. That's where your blessings are. I wasn't asking him. But I was just in his presence, then he spoke to me. And then, uh, uh, that was 1997, among several things. I mean, 1997, I remember the year 2000, February, he told me, I want you to start praying for your wife. At night, I was in prayer at night. I wasn't even thinking then of getting married. And then, the later that year in December, 
he showed me that she was the one I was going to get married to. I didn't even ask who am I going to get married to. He showed me when I, when I was in his presence and we got married. And then in 2000, before then 1999, 1999 he spoken to me of Jerusalem Ministries, then it used to be Jerusalem Ministries here. And then in the year 2000, he tells me in his presence, I want you to go to the Bible school. Then I asked him, why do you want me to go to the Bible school? He gives me the instructions regarding that. And while I'm in the Bible school, I'm just enjoying his presence. He tells me, I want you to submit your ministry under Pastor's Word and Carlos. Okay. And while I do that, then later on, he tells me, you are a Joshua to Moses. Pastor Wade is Moses and you are Joshua. <laughs> so you need to be pay attention to that. I didn't ask him, he told me. You see that? He's, listen, it's in his presence, that's, that's where his purposes are birthed. If we, Miss Tin and I spend some time with you, Miss Ruth, you know that you have so much that we can get from you. But every time we come to you, it's because you want something. <laughs> uh, would you loan us? That's the time you see us. When, in fact, when you see us, you know there's a loan being asked now. And yet they haven't paid the previous one. You understand? Even our smiles are saying we need a loan. But if Tina and I can come and spend time with you, heart to heart conversation, we can talk and talk and talk. You, you, you have those impressions like, I think I need to. They might be need, but they are not telling at all. You can't tell. But there's something that I just love to bless them with this. And like, we, we go and say, We didn't come to you. For this, please don't think like we came so that you may get this. We came just to spend time with you. And then you say this, but Pastor, what I, what I want to do is just to be a blessing to you people. Oh, okay. Fine. We leave, Lord. Not because we came, because we, we need, she has the ability, but that was not in our thinking. If we approach God, He has everything. But we didn't come for everything that He has. We came for Him as a person. He loved us. He couldn't have heaven without us. And we, we just, not our goals for 2024. We may have good goals, thank God. Your vision board, thank God. But I want to spend I believe he can un unveil some things to us that which eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man. The things that he, he has prepared for us will love us, will love him. In fact, the, 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 the Passion Translation says, He's lovers. <laughs> we become God lovers. Then he can manifest his presence and he can show us things that only him can show us. Linger. Don't rush. Don't go with a business plan every time. Don't go with your requests every time. Abraham, Abraham then, uh, has he was almost standing a hundred years. When the three men came, one of them I believe is the pre-incarnation of Jesus, to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. When they came, he didn't start putting his, his prayer request. He didn't even mention, he fed them. That's fellowship, that's fellowship. In fact, the Bible says he stood as they ate. And when they finished, God says, can we hide anything from him, brother? Can we hide? This is a man, his heart is not anything he can take, but all what he can give. And God, spoke to him concerning the long-awaited promise. I believe that's what he is. Just say something to him, please, tonight. Go ahead. Thank you, Father. Thank you. 
making love. Thank you for your presence. For you have invited us not to come once in a while. You've invited us to dwell. To dwell. To dwell in the secret place of the Most High. As we renew our minds, I know we will experience more. You see what that does? It removes lies that you have accepted as the truth. Lies of the enemy. Perspectives of the enemy. Influences our thinking in line with the word of God. But as we renew our minds, the scripture says that we may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We will experience His presence. We will experience Him, the one who loves us. The one whose name is Emmanuel. God is with us, with us and God with His people. Father, I'm praying for each and every single person in this place. The one that has failed that you seem to be far away from them. I'm asking you right now, Father, for that experiential presence. His presence. Just lift your hands. I'm asking you, Father, for that assurance in the hearts of your people that you're with them right now. Clothe us with your presence. Clothe us with your presence. We forgive. We forgive. Say, I forgive. And I receive your forgiveness, Father. And I receive your presence. Clothe me with your presence, with the love of God. Thank you, Father. And may this be right now over every one of you. In Jesus' name. 